Welcome to episode six of our seven-part series, where we examine the top six uh, RX 580 currently available on the market um, in top six in gaming to see how well they actually mine and who's the fastest. Um, before we move on to this episode's video card, which is supposed to be the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 580 Limited Edition, just wanted to point out. Um, in the, in the last episode, I talked about how I think the XFX GTRS is perhaps the ugliest uh, of the six video cards. Um, I was being a little bit unfair. I'm sure this design style fits uh, certain people's liking, but I do want to point out quickly that uh, inside the box, uh, they did include two adapters. One is a six pin. Molex, six pin to two Molex. So you can use your Molex um, connectors to supply power to the six pin portion of the uh, power input on the video card if you're lacking uh, cables. And it also came with um, one of these which is has two six pin uh, input and an eight pin output as well. So, very thoughtful of XFX to do these. And I want to point out one cool feature on the XFX, which is their toolless fan replacement design. All you do is like this. It has the contacts right here. And the contacts right there. It just snaps into place. Super easy to do. And this is a very thoughtful feature because it makes replacing faulty fans very easy, very quickly. And the fans are perhaps the first component to go in a video card of this quality. Okay, now moving on to the star of this episode, which is the Sapphire Nitro Plus. The Sapphire Nitro Plus Limited Edition is very limited. It's very hard to find them um, on the market. Uh, similar to the XFX, it is a, considered a two-slot card. And why is it a limited edition? Well, the core clock is at um, 1450 megahertz. And um, yeah, it comes with two sets of fans. One already installed that um, are just your regular fans. And the other sets are actually, uh, they light up. So we'll unbox this and show you real quick. All right, so inside the big box, you will find a smaller box. This smaller box actually comes with not just your usual stuff, but two fans. Now we've already switched out the fans. So these are the ones that are installed by default they're black and underneath the foam protection you see the actual car and this has the clear fans that uh, glows blue when they're plugged in to the power We do like this uh, gun metal, gun metal gray. Um, that's what they call it. It's uh, very similar to the regular Nitro Plus, except the color is slightly different. And this part actually has RGB um, LED. It has a six-pin power input and an eight-pin power input, and. It has a bio switch right there. Don't know if you can see. Right, right there. So in many ways, it's very similar to DXFX, except in our opinion, this is a better looking video car. Now, Sapphire is never known for making flashy looking video cards. I mean the design is very, it's got the rounded corner, 
It's just a clean looking design. And we like it. And uh, as far as ports go, it comes with the standard DVI. And by the way, MSI is a reference design. It doesn't have any DVI connection. That's very annoying. Okay, it has one and two display ports as well as two HDMI port. So this is considered a uh, VR friendly video card. Can't wait to plug this thing in and show you what it can do. On to the test. So I'm um, back on April 24th. There was a review conducted on the Sapphire Natural Plus RX 580 Limited Edition um, at Crypto Mining Blog. And in that review, um, it had it showed that the memory of their unit was Hynix and that it only uh, gave a stock uh, hash rate of 22.5 and it was very disappointing so we were afraid that um, that's going to be the case for all of the limited edition uh, seeing how usually they don't switch memories for um, the same model um, but we got lucky and ours came with yes Samsung Samsung yay confirmed Samsung with a almost 80% 79.6% ASIC quality not too shabby um, and because it's Samsung RAM, we are hashing away at default clock uh, 1450. See that 1450? That's pretty speedy for the default clock uh, with a 2000 uh, megahertz memory clock. Um, and it is hashing away at 24.7 mega hashes, which is what um, what we come to. Uh, enjoy with the Samsung all the cards with the Samsung RAM is that um, usually the a gig uh, edition comes standard clock at uh, 24.7 hash rate without any modification to the BIOS uh, which will also mean that um, modifying this card will be super easy um, you can see that the we have not manually adjust the fan speed it's on auto it's at spinning at 49% and the car is reaching 71 degrees Celsius, it is 72 degrees. It is on the hotter side of the cards, even at almost 50% fan speed. Uh, when we mine, we usually adjust the fan speed manually, the fan curve, um, I should say. Um, anyway, let's look at the wattage. It is because of the high clock of 1450 megahertz core clock, it is consuming at whopping 151 watts that's huge by the way uh, we will show you um, the uh, power consumption difference at the wall for before and after in our final episode for all of the cards that we've tested um, so you will get a better a clear view of uh, what the actual power consumption is because the software monitoring um, although they try to do a good job, um, they don't tell the whole story. And we actually have equipment that will show us at the wall um, how much these are consuming at uh, the before and after. Um, so just be patient. In episode 7, we're going to be grading all of our cards. We have a detailed metrics that consider the power consumption, the optimum efficiency, hash rate, um, you know, watt versus um, hash rate, uh, even the weight of each card. And there's a huge difference. Uh, for example, the XFX GTRS is under two pound, uh, whereas the ASUS T8G Top Overclock Edition uh, is at almost three pounds. Um, that's a huge weight difference. That's because of the heat sink difference. 
So um, we're going to go ahead and modify uh, the BIOS of this card real quick. And don't worry, we're going to make a video that shows you how to mod uh, your BIOS and how to flash them. It's pretty simple, actually. And there are actually plenty of videos already on YouTube. But we're because it's so simple, we don't see the harm in just making a couple more um, to be in the mix in case um, you're curious on how to do it. Um, so, okay, we'll be right back. After a quick BIOS flash by changing the uh, copying the 1750 timing in set 1 to set the 2000 timing in set 1, uh, this car is mining happily at 28 mega hashes per second. Um, that's a jump from a 24.7 to a 28. That's well, a healthy jump. Um, and as you can still see, we haven't changed any of the settings. Uh, obviously, we're gonna, this is all going to be changed. We're going to see how much we can get out of this card. But right now, it's everything is looking peachy. Uh, obviously, the power consumption did go up. Uh, that usually happens when um, you change the timing. Uh, and that will cause the temperature to go up slightly more as well. Um, but 28 mega hashes. This card is looking go good. So we'll do some fine tuning. And uh, now, don't get me wrong here. Um, all of the videos that we've done so far, where we do the fine tuning on the spot, um, sometimes it takes a couple hours to do, and sometimes we get really frustrated. But uh, ultimately, these won't be the final settings that we'll be using um, because we actually spend a lot more time in the background. Um, trying to get the best case scenario and we use um, softwares other than Afterburner because Afterburner has a lot of limitations especially when it comes to core voltage but we figure since we started with Afterburner we'll do use Afterburner on all the cards just so it's a fair comparison um, because then you'll see with Afterburner's limitation how um, how much it's affecting the each card's performance um, but we do suggest using um, settings actually in the BIOS itself. So we mod the BIOS to the optimum setting. Um, so we don't have to worry about anything as far as launching the software. Or some people tr prefer to do it uh, in Claymore, which we'll have a video covering how to uh, program Claymore as well for the different uh, temperature, core, clock, and fan speed settings. Um, and then Obviously, you can always use Wattman, which is part of the uh, Crimson um, uh, driver. So anyway, uh, we'll do some quick fine tuning and uh, we'll see uh, how fast we can get this car to go in a stable way. Thank you. Be right back. Okay, after uh, about 45 minutes of uh, continuous mining Ethereum on Claymore 9.3, we can comfortably say that even though there is some GPU memory errors occurring, that it is actually really stable at the uh, 31.2 mega hashes per second. That's right, you heard me right. It's 31.2 mega hashes um, with the settings of 1325 megahertz and core clock and 2250 megahertz memory clock. Now, if you don't want to see any memory errors, uh, we've tested it at uh, 2225 and 2200, which will both give you um, 31 plus um, mega hashes um, per second and uh, without any memory errors. But uh, 31.2, if you want that kind of speed, um, right here again, then uh, you're going to have to push it to the 2250 core clock and uh, tolerate a little bit of memory errors. Um, after 47 minutes, it's still running smooth. Uh, it might crash after many, many hours, but uh, if that is a gamble you would like to take, uh, this is to us a pretty stable card. I am impressed, truly impressed. The Sapphire Nitro Plus Limited Edition uh, hash rate wise, it is the fastest that we've been able to get out of all six cards. And it's no good to know that it's also only consuming 117 watt at this setting. Um, 
impressive. And, uh, wow. I still can't believe it. I'm in shock. Anyway, um, in the next episode, which is the final episode of our uh, seven-part series, we are going to uh, show you all the uh, final, final, as in after what we've done in the background as far as uh, fine-tuning each card to get to the most stable and fastest hash rate possible. We'll publish, publish all the bios, original and modded, and uh, we will give you the report cards on all of them uh, that will compare all the attributes of the cards and uh, whether which one will be most suited for mining. Now, some people might say these scores, these hash rates are so close to each other. Uh, it's true, but uh, you got to remember some of them achieve the hash rate at much higher power consumption than the other ones. So, um, the ones that can achieve the highest while consuming the least amount of power uh, and or um, at the least the lowest temperature because temperature equals longevity the cooler they run the longer they're likely to run uh, that's the, the something about semiconductors heat is the number one enemy of uh, semiconductor chips so um, it's longevity is directly related to how well the cooling solution is uh, especially when you are overclocking it anyway we appreciate you watching this episode uh, Click the like button if you have not, and uh, please subscribe to our channel. And we look forward to the big reveal in Episode 7. Have a great day. Goodbye.